Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. What is your approach to a spring game? How important is it? How completely irrelevant is it? What's your What are your thoughts? Well, it's, it's pretty important to see, you know, pecking order and to see what you're going to expect out of the team. It, it's a dress rehearsal. You know, you don't, you don't have preseason football games in NCAA football, you know, so it is what you get to see, you know, where players are going to line up, you know, what string people are and how they look in their dress rehearsal. You know, it, it's pretty interesting if you are someone who really wants to know what's going to be in the team. You know, there's there's two types of fans, the happy ones who show up in August and look at the roster and, you know, the tryhards who look at every recruiting update, every decommitment, every spring game, every practice, and uh, I'm in the latter. Yeah, and those are the folks that listen. So uh, you're probably talking to a whole host of them at this point. Um, all right, where do your eyes go first tomorrow then? First and foremost is going to be, can that defensive front seven hold its own against this stout offensive line? Most of practice, the answer's been no. And there's been a, a play here or there. We know what we got in the offensive line, but uh, defensive front seven, eh, it's been a little shaky. So. We're going to see how they hold up in a dress rehearsal. I'm going to keep my my expectations low on that front, but uh, hopefully they can at least show to hold their own. And then uh, I'll say after that, my gaze is going to go toward that backup quarterback battle because this is football, and uh, you know it's very often that your backup quarterback is thrust into action. And right now, it is a tightly contested battle between Ricky Swan and. Uh, <laughs> Ricky Collins and A.J. Swan. <laughs> Combined them there. That's all right. Uh, yeah. No, look, um, I, let's go back to the defensive line then. We talked a little bit earlier about some of the young players, uh, about Deshaun Womack and some of those a couple weeks ago. But what about some guys that have been around for a while? Is there reason to expect a, a jump in play with maybe some help from Bo Davis from guys like Jacoby and Guillory or Savion Jones? Yeah, I was going to say, Jacoby and Guillory is probably the one guy at defensive tackle where you're happy about with his spot. Brian Kelly talked about him as a run stopper, which is one of the things I'm going to be looking for. Is he truly a good run stopper, or is he just the best of what you've got? Um, you know, and I, I think Jacoby and Gilly is a highly recruited guy and a guy who, frankly, has had to sit behind a lot of good players. Jordan Jefferson, Mason Smith. Uh, you think about, you know, um, um, uh, Makai Wingo. Those are three pretty darn solid players where, you know, at best he's your fourth defensive tackle, and now he's stepping up to be your one guy. Is is the play time and coaching going to step his game up to the next level? Because I think he's got draftable player potential. He just had not had that production at LSU for the you know aforementioned reasons. So he, he's definitely a guy I'll be looking at quite a bit. A name that's been mentioned a few times uh, throughout press conferences has been Paris Shand and kind of what they want to do with him. Not a huge factor last year. Is that role going to increase this year? Yeah, well, there's, you know, Swinson's out of the way now, so, um, you know, he, he, he'll he be opened up to more play time. He's going to have to fend off Deshaun Womack for snap time. I'm sure, you know, they'll rotate in and out. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, and on Saturday, he actually had two plays that I call sacks. One where, you know, you can't tackle the quarterback, but he's there, and they let his throat get off, and my thought was, eh, it's a sack. So I saw him make two sacks. Um I think he's just going to be a solid contributor. Um, I don't know if he's a, a, a big-time playmaking defensive end, but hopefully he's someone who can give some outside run contain, put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, and, and really give them some hope. But, it, you know, if he's not, just understand Deshaun Womack is there, and the defensive end spot is stacked a little more nicely than the defensive tackle spot. Look, in the uh, in fall camp last year, Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors just did whatever they wanted to do, and they pretty much did that when they got to the season as well. They're not there anymore. Do you think the corners will be able to hold their own tomorrow against the wide receivers? I think they're going to do better than the defensive line. We'll do better against that offensive line. Number one, the offensive line is better than the receiving core this year, and that's not a shot at the receiving core because the receiving core is just fine. The offensive line is just going to be one of the best units in the country. Number two, um, I think that the defensive backs have shown more improvement than the defensive line in this fall camp. You know, they're making some plays here and there. Sage Ryan had multiple interceptions in one practice. I think that they're stepping up some new guys. I think BJ Woodland's going to be someone to watch out for. He's a guy who's been getting starting reps. 
and he's nimble and he's long, you know, I, I could see him making some plays. I do expect Kyron Lacey and that core to really have the upper hand, but I think it's going to be much closer than what you see on the defensive line uh, compared to the offensive line. This is not something I've thought about at all this spring, and I think I'm probably in the majority with that because when you think about LSU's offensive line and you think about left tackle, you go, well, they got Will Campbell. He's one of the best in the country, if not the best in the country, and I, I believe that. Um, who's after him? I, I'm not even talking about injury. Like, down the road when he's gone, does LSU have an heir apparent at left tackle? Because I'm well, imagining that Will Hamble's not going to play a ton tomorrow, quite frankly. <laughs> Um, I hope he doesn't. I, I, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing both the bookend tackles take a day off, but we'll probably see them get a little bit of action out there. We do want to give a full dress rehearsal to some guys. Um, you know, I'm not sure that the immediate guy who comes in is the same guy as your future guy. I look at a guy like Weston Davis and how talented he is, um, and I wonder if, if he's a guy who eventually works his way up. I think day one, your backup tackles are going to be Tyree Adams and uh, Bo Bordelon. I think that's who you're looking at. And we're talking about guys who a pretty strong spring. There's plenty of clips of them out there, you know, eating up that second string defensive line. So I think I, I, I think that it's actually two separate answers is what you're looking for. Because while a guy like Weston Davis, uh, is highly talented and probably a tackle of the future five-star guy. He's out there playing basketball right now or was playing basketball a month yeah. ago for a high school team, you know, and uh, whereas all these other guys are out here playing spring ball and getting ready to go. You, I doubt he'll be ready to play by August, but maybe next August yeah. he's a guy who could surpass a lot of guys who are getting experience right now. I trust Brad Davis. Whoever wants to put out there, I'll, I'll be just fine with at this point. I got a uh, early thought on most outstanding player of the spring game. Uh, that's Caleb Jackson, based on everything we've seen with the <laughs> offensive line against that defensive line and how few running backs there actually are out there. Uh, are you excited to see him tomorrow? I am, but I'll take, I actually don't think he gets a ton of action okay. because um, if there's a position group right now where if you get one injury to and – all of a sudden, everything is just thrown in disarray for this team. Wouldn't you say that's running back? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> imagine Caleb Jackson goes out there and has 15 carries and, you know, uh, breaks an ankle out there. I mean, heaven forbid, but, like, I honestly think he and Josh Williams are going to be limited to under 10 carries because it's a stupid spring game, and both of those guys, you know, have been in the system. You kind of know. I mean, Caleb Jackson needs the reps more than Caleb uh, than um, Josh Williams, but – uh, I, I mean, I, I would be, I would be surprised if Caleb Jackson gets a ton of carries. That being said, in his limited action, don't don't be surprised if Caleb Jackson just eats this defense alive for you know <laughs> five carries or whatever he gets. I think they're going to lean heavy on the walk ons in this game. Did, were you surprised when Brian Kelly said they weren't going to look uh, for a running back in the portal? So the only position they're looking at is defensive tackle. Um. Well, number one, the way that question was asked, uh, it's kind of open ended where the coach has to like actively be thinking of something uh, to give a good answer. So like, you know, do I think that he actually went down his chart of players he's keeping an eye on? Uh, he, he might have just simply, you know, not thought about running back at that moment. But um, I think that shows that they do have confidence that they do eventually expect Trey Holly to be a part of this team. I think that that more so than any of his direct comments addressing the Trey Holly situation is revealing to me. Um, secondly, uh, yeah, if they have those four guys, you know, because um, you're also bringing in Caden Durham from Duncanville High School, yeah, you're in a pretty good spot with, you know, one veteran back and three guys who are have very talented that you feel really good about your future there. So I think you would be fine. But uh, if Trey Holly is not a part of the team, uh, I think you got to pull at least a warm body in. To, to come and play some running back for you. Because, I mean, in practice, from what I've seen, once your first two guys are done running, there has been a substantial drop-off in productivity from, you know, the two scholarship guys and the walk-on guys. So I don't think you'd feel good about rolling any of those walk-ons to get carries. I think you're you're honestly in a position where you're probably swapping a running back, or, I'm sorry, a receiver to running back if, if you lose guys at this point. So... Um, I, 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 I hear what he's saying about not looking at a transfer portal. I think that that's very much so contingent on Trey Holly getting cleared. And if Trey Holly's not cleared, I don't believe him anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, my point was, like, it's really hard to find an SEC caliber defensive tackle just on a whim. You can find a 5'11", 220-pound guy to run the football a little bit if in a, in a pinch um, pretty yeah. quickly, I, I would think. Yeah, I mean, if we're just talking about a serviceable, you know, good back, especially running behind a really good offensive line, yeah, you, you can find a guy to, to take care of that, but I don't necessarily – I, I don't think you could do that the same at defensive tackle. Those guys are, are tough to find. Uh, the, the other thing about running back is it's not like – it's typically not a position that will really mess up other guys. Um, you know, like your offensive line, if, if you don't have an offensive lineman that can block, you can't pass the football, you can't run the football. It just impacts so many different people. Running back, you, you, you get the ball and, and you go make a play or you don't. It doesn't really – impact the re- the way your offense functions you know yeah no question uh, no question about that all right we'll see you up at uh, tiger stadium tomorrow preston thanks man all right see you there he's preston guy tigerbait.com they'll have full coverage of the lsu spring game hey thanks for watching hunt on lsu before you get out of here do us a couple of favors hit that like button leave your comments below and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting tiger football talk see you next time